So when I handed over IDE three years ago to new leadership and stayed on the board, I started an organization called DREV for Design Revolution. It's based in Palo Alto and it's a, it's a technology incubator for radically affordable technology. They're focusing initially on biomedical devices. To me, design is a process of creative problem solving. And a critical part of design is designing for scalability. That's not talked about much, and I'll go into that a little bit more. Uh, but the very nature of trying to create four new major transformative multinational corporations has scale built into it. The water company, once we get out of beta test, in the first year, for the first six months, it will uh, initiate 25 new villages every month. It'll then go to 50 villages a month. And in the second year, it plans to go to 100 villages a month. Uh, within three years, we plan to be in 10,000 villages and have access to 30,000 Karana shops. But you have to design for that. You, that doesn't happen by itself. You don't build a prototype and then, it, then it'll grow more naturally. You have to design for scale. Here's an example of a product that I thought was not very useful from the beginning and it actually has turned out that way. I won't go into that in any detail now. A critical part of the design process for $2 a day customers is what I call the ruthless pursuit of affordability. That involves a design process that sets specific cost targets carefully analyzes what the tool or service does, identifies the key contributors to cost, and designs each, around each cost point by finding acceptable trade-offs. In designing drip irrigation, a big part of the cost is the weight of the material. A big part of the weight of the material is the thickness of the plastic pipes. In a large drip system, uh, the lateral lines, which are the plastic pipes, have to be pretty long. And they have to be pretty thick because the pressure has to be enough at the end of the pipe to provide as much water at the end as it does at the beginning. When you're doing a drip system that is, uh, irrigates a third of this room, you can uh, lower the pressure dramatically. You can just put a drum uh, on a table at shoulder height right at the front of this room and run a pipe from it. That means that you can actually use plastic sleeves instead of plastic pipes and you cut the cost enormously. That principle applies to the design process for these customers. So in the end, uh, it's a process of design. We very quickly put the technology or the service in the hands of customers. We listen to what they say about it, we adapt it, and we keep doing that. Uh, if you go through that process, you have to throw out a lot of stuff, but it, in the end, uh, it's rare that you don't have something that really works. <coughs> Here's some examples. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with this. Uh, the uh, entrepreneurial design for extreme affordability class at Stanford came up with uh, the Embrace incubator. Uh, premature infants really need temperature more than anything else. Um, if you're in a setting in a village with no electricity, you can do that by designing a little sleeping bag, putting a, uh, uh, a bag of wax in it, heating the wax, so it's a phase change material that, pro uh, that provides heat. You heat the wax, uh, if you have the right amount of wax, you put the container of wax into the sleeping bag, and it'll keep the infant's temperature at body temperature for five hours. Then uh, you heat the wax again, and when the mother heats the wax, she holds the baby against her skin. That was 25 bucks, it's now 75 bucks. The team is in India, they're making, I think, slow progress. Uh, but that then replaces a several thousand dollar device with a $75 device. DREV uh, developed, uh, the Remotion team developed uh, a uh, artificial knee. Uh, there, it's being tested uh, with the Jaipur Foot Organization in India. 3,500 people have tried it. Uh, the retail cost is uh, 
is 80 bucks and it seems to be working very well. These are just examples. Um, 